In this video, we're going to very quickly show you how you can export data via Cloud Shell uh, directly from your autonomous database. So for starters, we're going to go ahead and open our Cloud Shell. All right, once we're inside our Cloud Shell, let's go ahead and source our Bash profile. So our connection information will be there. And if you haven't, uh, this video does assume that you've gone through uh, how to set up your OCI Shell console to connect to autonomous database before you can proceed. So uh, with this information, we'll go ahead and minimize that. And let's go ahead and create a new auth token. So go down to my profile. I'm going to go to auth tokens. And we're going to generate a token. Okay, I'm going to copy this token. Please know it's only ever saved once, so it's pretty important that you make a note of that. All right, next we're going to go up and create a new bucket that will host our uh, export data. Okay, we're going to click into that bucket and we're going to grab two pieces of information. One is the bucket name. And for simplicity, uh, I just am going to put the, this information right here. And we need to grab the namespace as well. All right, now we can get to the fun. So we're going to go ahead and connect to our SQL web developer. And first, I'm just going to check to see if we have a database credential. The database credential is what we use to export to object storage. And you can see we don't have a credential. So now we're going to want to create one. So to create, create it, we're going to actually drop in our auth token as the password. Um, this information for username you see right here, that actually will come over here from uh, the profile you're connected in as. And we're going to give it a credential name of chipscred2. And then we'll run this to create our credential. We can test to see that it was created, issuing our query before. So now that we can see it exists. Now we're going to go ahead and form uh, the URL to our object storage by pasting in the namespace and the bucket name we collected earlier. With the syntax of this URL formed, we're going to go ahead and start building out our export command here. We'll add in our database connection information, our credential name that we created earlier. We're going to grab the URL to object storage that we formatted and put this as our path. And then we're just going to call this our 8-27 dump file. In this case, we're just going to export a single table. So we'll put that up there. Specify the log file export name. And we're going to just have that log go to the data pump directory so we can show you something cool after this. With this syntax, we're going to go ahead and copy it. And we'll go back to our cloud shell. We'll paste this in and run the command. So there's a couple ways once it completes that we can check that it did complete. One would be just to simply refresh, refresh the page. See the dump file there. We can also go in here and execute a query using our credential to see what files exist. Then we can see our dump file that just came out. Now you may remember I said, hey, we're going to use the data pump directory. This is a default directory with autonomous that's, that's always there. Um, technically, we could have sent our dump file there. But in this case, I just sent the log file. So if we want to see what is in the data pump directory, we can see that. We can see our export log uh, from 827. Now, if you ever need to move a file from the data pump directory on autonomous to your object storage bucket, there's a simple command, dbms cloud put object. We can go ahead and do that. And then we can query our object storage again. And we can see that the log file is there. And that's a quick look at how you can use data pump to export from autonomous uh, and leverage the data pump directory.